welcome Central Illinois. As always, we're glad when you can join us at noon. We hope you've been able to stay safe and dry and navigate safely to your destinations. Now we're going to start with your top story. Those were the sights and sounds of just yesterday in the afternoon at the U of I's quad where about 100 pro-Palestine protesters convened. After things got out of hand last Friday night, we're glad you're here on Matthew White. Protesters had put up tents early Friday morning of last week and police had given them 30 minutes to remove them. But this is what we know so far. They had to be cleared of the encampments, but there was a bit of chaos that grew later on in the day. So police and protesters eventually clashed because the tents were brought back. Things died down and then there were hours of negotiations between U of I admin and demonstration leaders. And eventually they agreed to move the protest near the Spurlock Museum, which is on the Urbana side of campus. Then a statement was posted on Instagram by the Students for Justice in Palestine saying that they wanted their voices heard in the heart of campus. WCI 3's Will Simmons will take us to the scene and a recap of what unfolded. Pro-Palestinian protesters started demonstrating on the U of I quad Sunday afternoon, even after Friday night's agreement with the university. That's when they decided to move the protest to the Spurlock Museum in Urbana, but Students for Justice in Palestine wanted to be somewhere in the heart of the campus where their voices could be heard. They posted a full statement on social media. People started showing up and chanting around 1.30. I talked to one person who wanted to remain anonymous. Other people were told not to talk to the press as they had trained media representatives. Our plan today here is to occupy the quad for the sake of Gaza, and we have a lot of uh, we have a long agenda plan. They then started spreading out in the grass, laying out tarps, and praying. Protesters offered Shabbat for Jewish supporters. U of I junior Ethan Maradi has both Israeli and Persian relatives. To me, I, I think there's blame on both sides. I think Netanyahu has to leave, Ben Gvir has to leave, but so does Hamas, because neither side will work with one another, and, and that's just how it, how it will be. Organizers say the point remains the same. They want the university to divest from funds supporting Israel. Around 5 p.m., demonstrators started setting up tents and linking arms. No police were on scene. We are tired of admin evading the question of if they will divest. We are tired of them acting like they are innocent and they have no say in this. And that is why we are here today. While on scene, I saw some protesters go through de-escalation training. Some were shouting out phone numbers to call to be bailed out of jail, just in case. There were about 100 people on the quad. University leaders confirmed some came by bus. I talked to a bus driver. He says he brought about 15 people from Chicago. They left around 6.30. But organizers say people will remain on the quad until they get what they want. Let it be a week. We are hoping to be here. Shortly after, U of I administrators began talking with protesters about next steps, starting a negotiation process. Chancellor Jones sent out a mass mail around 8 p.m. saying, in part, the demonstrators were again informed of the policies and rules for activities in this area. Members of the group began setting up tents and other structures that are in violation of the rules and policies as explained to them. Violating the rules could end in an arrest or suspension. The chancellor says he and the president offered to meet with group representatives. The offer was refused. Many protesters didn't agree with the mass email, saying the admin team was lying. Their complicity and how they aid it. And it's really disheartening to see that there's not many students on this campus who are uh, who are wanting to join the encampment. The Illini Hillel also released a statement saying admin and police are discouraging counter protests because they will, quote, only further inflame an already dangerous situation. There were no counter protests while I was on scene, no law enforcement either. Protesters prepared to camp out for the night despite disciplinary warnings from school administrators. Reporting in Urbana, Will Simmons, WCI3, your local news leader. Alrighty, Will, thank you. And even with those protests over the weekend, students were still scheduled to have classes today. There were many buildings closed yesterday, including the Illini Union, along with many others around the quad, but the union was set to reopen as of 7 this morning.